From EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in North Whitehall, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting, LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to you. It is another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 3rd. And uh, going into the month of February, as we're looking at uh, things going back a little bit. Now, we're looking at uh, maybe second week of January onward. February looked like it was going to be a pretty wild month. Uh, we still have some snow opportunities going forward. And winter is not over by any stretch of the imagination. I think there is a cap or a time limit on exactly how long we have wintry potential. And that time is shortening and running out. Uh, but we do have opportunities going forward after we get past this first week. And we'll discuss that here in the video. The first week's going to be very mild. Of course, we had another prediction from uh, Punxsutawney Phil yesterday. It said that uh, did not see a shadow. And uh, therefore, uh, the idea there is that we have an early spring. And uh, no more eight weeks of winter. Well, we did the long range on Friday. And we have, regardless of what the... Uh, the uh, groundhog said, and this is, of course, done on Friday before he made his prediction, that we expect that it should be six weeks, six more weeks of winter without the groundhog's, with or without the groundhog's approval. Uh, of course, the groundhog disagreed, uh, disagreed so uh, we're going to go with six more weeks, and that's it. I think once we get to the point of uh, you're in the, maybe you're on the 10th to 15th of March, that's your last hurrah, and that's it. And then we go right into spring, bring on spring, spring pattern moves in. I don't think this is a year where it lasts all the way into April like we saw last year. Uh, but up through the beginning of March, maybe the first week or two of March, you're still going to have the opportunity for some snow. Is it going to be a gigantic storm? I doubt it. Doubt it. Possible. Anything's possible. Well, let's be, let's be honest. But the pattern is setting up as such that we're going to get into a colder, snowier pattern past this week, of course. Because, look, this week is... Ugh. Straight through Friday. But after that, you're in a, pa a pattern here where you're at least near to slightly below average. As long as you get the cold air in place, you're giving yourself a fighting chance. But we're not getting into that big amplified pattern that just gives you those big coastal storms and just dumps on you. Now we're getting more into, uh, if you're going to get a heavier snow event, it's going to have to be something from overrunning that just is crazy. So like a southwest flow event. And that's actually shown here to be to happen here in this winter storm single time frame, which by that I outlined this on Friday, and by the way, it's still there. Still there this morning. Okay. But before that, we had uh, we had the snow showers a couple on Friday. Groundhog Day, he made his prediction. We have rain coming in uh, toward the end of the week. Doesn't look like a huge deal, but it looks like a you know warm front and then a cold front, and that's it. So but it will be in the form of rain. This is next Thursday, Friday. And then we have a winter storm signal still there. And that 10th to 12th time uh, time frame, favoring the 11th and 12th time frame, actually, probably not the 10th. All right, but then we have winter storm signals that, that uh, exist after that. When I say winter storm signals, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean we're getting a foot of snow or two feet of snow. And a matter of fact, I don't think we're going to have that this year. We're not going to have one of those big blockbusters. If we do, uh, like I said, it's possible, but it's going to be have to be something that is just like way thread the needle. Perfect. Rather than needle, but this is not a big coastal storm setup going forward. But we do have uh, February below average, and we still have above average snowfall for the month. Now, that doesn't mean a lot to most of you. When you see above average, uh, it's all relative, and a lot of people think, oh, wow, it means we're going to get like three, four feet of snow this month. No, it doesn't mean that. Uh, one area here I can know, I know is, because uh, uh, I live close to here, Allentown, February snowfall normal is like around 11 and a half inches. So if you're above average, if you're a 12 or 13, guess what? That's above average. It doesn't mean you're going to have a tremendous amount of snow. And I don't think we're going to end up in a lot of places above average snowfall this year. Some interior areas that did well this year so far, if you want to compare to the coast or southeast PA and uh, parts, of, uh, parts of New Jersey and northeast New Jersey and central New Jersey that have been shafted this year, comparatively speaking to those areas, some of those areas are near average. Allentown and north and west are near average. South and east there, not so much. So I feel for you guys in Southeast PA. I uh, still think you have some opportunities going forward, but they're going to be 
more gradient type stuff. And I'll explain that here in the video here. So um, Madden Julian Oscillation, we're looking at phase seven, which is this area right here. And it is going to loop back into phase six a little bit before taking a turn back eastward and heading toward the international date line. The question is, how fast does it do that? Okay, and there's a difference in opinion between the, uh, the, the GEFS, which are the GFS ensembles, to so take it a big, my gigantic turn here in a gate into phase six, big wide turn here, and then an amplified phase seven. Eventually, you would think, even if this ended up being correct, which I don't think it is, it, it, it will continue into phase eight. Which is, these are good phases in, in winter for, for cold, at least, and, and, and perhaps stormy weather. So if you want cold and stormy weather, you want it in 8, 1, and 2. Well, it's heading that direction, generally. Okay, uh, looking at the European guidance, it's a little bit more aggressive with that signal. Less pronounced going back, that backtrack into phase 6, and then it just cuts back eastward to phase 7, phase, and now this does show the phase 8. And it's eventually going to continue this way, like this, because the European weeklies are telling me that. See that? There's zero weeklies. Takes it right through seven, uh, through eight, one, and two, and this goes all the way to the fourth of March. Once you get a phase three, that's a cutoff. So that means that uh, after the for the first week of March, is the zero weeklies are saying, guess what? Winter's over. I think you have that time period. That's very possible. I think it's going to be probably during that first and second week of, of March. There is a lag time of a couple days. So if it's right here still at the end of phase two at well, the fourth of March, it's probably during that second week of March that it shuts off and we turn to spring. So I think we're we're not going to be holding on to this forever, and one of the reasons is you're, you're I mean you're heading into these warmer phases. When you get into a late March and you're in three four, forget it. Those are warm phases. Those are mild. So we should turn milder on time this year, maybe a little couple days earlier, and get back for those of you who are looking for spring. But uh, this week is starting starting February. We are in a milder pattern, and everybody knows that this is going actually has a time limit. Also, it's going to be starting. Today, actually, we're going to have progressively warmer temperatures each day. Peaks on Tuesday. A little cold front comes through Tuesday. It doesn't really do too much, but lowers the temperatures back in the 40s for uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, we warm up ahead of that cold front back in the 50s for a day, and then, then, then we're down below average again, or at least near to slightly below average after this point. All this is going to start moving eastward a little bit. Now, uh, a lot of you are, are, are pretty well versed, and you're – you know, into the teleconnections, and then you look at this stuff here, and you're like, wow, this is, how are you supposed to get any kind of winner here? How you're not canceling winter with with this look here? You have your cold air source is your Arctic Oscillation. It's positive, okay? Positive Arctic, Arctic Oscillation projected going forward. And, I, and it doesn't matter. I'm using the euro here. I could use the GFS, and it would be the same thing. It's pretty close. Positive Arctic, Arctic Oscillation right here. So that's not good to, as far as getting cold into the into the uh, the U.S. You have a negative PNA, which is your ridge out in the western United States. It's negative, which means they have a trough out in the in the western United States. So you need this to be positive to have a big East Coast storm potential. Uh, not there. It's negative. Okay. See that? Here's the positive negative line right here. Okay. South of here, this is negative. That's not good. Okay. And lastly. You have the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is your Greenland blocking. This is the NAO. Positive going forward. Okay, so there's no blocking available either. So you're like, well, what, what is exciting about this pattern? Why are you not throwing the towel in a winner? Well, we have one more thing here. This is a very important thing, too. This is the EPO, East, East Pacific Oscillation. And this is what is going to drive our cold once we get past the 7th. See how it's like just you know kind of hanging around neutral here up through? February 7th, 8th. Okay, then a cold front comes through, and it, and the EPO turns negative. See that right here? And pretty pretty strong negative, too. Now, this is important because this gets our cold. I don't really care about uh, Omaha, Nebraska. I don't care about, uh, you know, Richmond, Virginia. I don't forecast for that area. I'm worried about you guys in our area. This kind of pattern here can help the Northeast United States and the Great Lakes as far as keeping cold in place so that when you have these systems come in, you have them in the form of wintry weather. So if you're a snow lover and you're lying, if you're hanging your hat on something, uh, the projections of the EPO are what we need to follow. Uh, because if it's this far negative, we're going to be okay for at least wintry systems. Not big storm potential because you don't have the teleconnections with that to give you that big East Coast storm threat. All right, now here's what the EPO does. If it is positive, and it's not, see, it's negative here. If you're in a positive, I mean, on this side of the line here, you get 
a mild Pacific uh, flow, and the entire country is pretty much warm. All the cold air is locked up to the north, and you have a low in the Aleutians over here, or the Gulf of Alaska. Okay, if it is negative, look what happens. If it's negative, you got big ridging into, into Alaska, so they're warm compared to, I mean, relative, of course, but you get a big, deep trough that sets over the the uh, northern and uh, north, northeast United States and north central. So if you look at the cold projections going forward, you see a lot of real cold air here and slightly below in our average in our area on the eastern periphery of that. This is a lot of a lot like 2014, 2015. We had this very uh, dominating pattern. OK, but you get a cross polar flow across the poles and you can still get the cold in place ahead of these systems. Now, what ends up, ends up happening here, if you look right down here where this arrow is, let's see the bottom of the trough here. Now, this is an El Nino, so you already have an active southern jet. But look where the jet's going, right along that thermal gradient, okay? So you can get some overrunning systems that can give us snow on the north side here, and that's what we're looking at going forward. I think that's the pattern you're going, going to. As you get out in time here, this is looking at the 17th on the EPS. Aggressive with the EPO. This is a negative EPO. See the big ridging here in Alaska where I put that X? Look what happens. You get a cross-polar flow. Okay. Now, the deepest cold is going to be out here. So we're not going to be brutally cold. But we don't have to be. We just need to be near to slightly below average because temperatures this time of year are cold, right? And you get that. You still have the southern jet very active. So your storm track's kind of like this. So you can get overrunning systems that'll give you snow and I think that's what you're going to end up having going forward at least in uh, with our storm signal period here's the GFS depiction of that now the doesn't the GF, uh, GFS is not as strong with that influence of the EPO and therefore it takes a system that cuts you'll see it cut into the Great Lakes and you have a high pressure sitting up here uh, funneling in the cold air okay so you have snow at the onset it has this has snow at the onset but it does have the warm air winning over with time it says warm front moves in. I don't think that's correct because if the EPO is like this, like the European guidance shows, you have a different system. You have a system that's, that follow, follows the thermal gradient. Here's that same time frame. Area low pressure is right here. And instead of cutting up here like this, it can't because you step, you have that uh, EPO, all your cold's locked in up here. So it kind of goes along this thermal gradient this way. And when you have that, on the north side of that, you can have some pretty good snow. Uh, where that sets up yet is still, the you know, devil's still in the details with that. Okay, but the whole idea here is you're pushing that gradient. You're moving everything further south. So when I say gradient, there's a line here, imaginary line. Uh, you have warm down here, and you have the cold air up here. This is from the EPO being, that, that makes it cold, okay? Wherever this gradient sets up is important. Uh, if it's over our area, we have a bunch of slop, okay? If it's further south, but not too far south, you get good snows here up in these areas from any grade, any systems coming along. And it's still going to be an active track, so you have that, you have that potential going forward, okay? Uh, and this is this is not going to be a locked-in cold type thing. EPO is not locked-in cold. This is this gives you these shots of cold, and it looks, even says it on here. These are It gives you the shots of, pole, uh, of cold coming in here, uh, at least in the northeast United States, because you have the cross-polar flow going, all right? So... As far as throwing in the towel, I put this graphic up last week with Rocky throwing to throw the towel. I am not throwing the towel in winter. I am close to throwing the towel on a massive coastal storm. I don't see that pattern developing going forward. And again, we have a very uh, limited time frame here. I think we're only talking about going up until the, uh, during the first and second, between the first and second week of March being done. And then we move to spring. So we have a limited time frame. So you're running out of time uh, for something. You, you, can you have a massive coastal storm? Yes, but I think it's going to be more overrunning related. And we had some pretty good overrunning situations where we had uh, over a foot of snow in, in a lot of areas from overrunning. That can happen. We have a juicy southern jet. It's just going to depend where the gradient sets up, where the baroclinic zone sets up. Okay, and you have that overrunning precipitation, warm air overriding cold air, and you have some pretty good snow on the northern side of that. Where is that northern side? We have to wait and see uh, how that happens. I don't think it ends up like the JFS showing shows right now. I don't think it has a good handle on the EPO, and that's why you're seeing these solutions where everything's cutting, cutting, cutting. I mean, you have snow at the onset because it's cold initially. Uh, but I think you're either going to have something where it tries to cut up here and then redevelops, because uh, that's possible too in a, in a uh, gradient pattern. You have a redeveloping low out here. I don't know why my mouse is going slow here. 
uh, or you just have something that is further south. You don't have this low up in the Great Lakes at all. Forget that's there. Uh, and instead, you have uh, area level pressure here that rides the gradient this way. Okay, so there's a lot of different solutions that we could be looking at going forward, but I just want to give you that idea of what the pattern is, the general idea of the pattern is going forward. Uh, mild temperatures are expected today through Friday until the cold front and the trough moves in. Okay, uh, so we will be mild this upcoming week. We do have rain coming in. Uh, looks like sh uh, uh, Thursday we have the warm front, and then we have Friday the cold front moving through. Not a lot of rain, but it does look like we have some rain moving in with that, and it will be in the form of rain. We're watching that EPO closely in the tropical forcing progression, uh, again, tropical forcing combined with EPO and a positive uh, atmospheric angular momentum will give you uh, at least favorable phases for uh, the cold to remain and perhaps the stormy weather to continue. I think, again, once you get to that period of, uh, you know, storm, during the first, second week of March, sometime during the second week of March, we're shutting this off. Uh, this, so we're looking for that, the EPO and the tropical forcing progression afterwards to dictate the subsequent pattern. All right, and that's going to be subsequent after the cold front moves through on Friday. Storm signal remains February 10th to 12th period. We're going to watch that period very closely. That is wintry potential regardless of what model you look at, whether it is a snow to rain situation, at least starts as snow on the GFS. Okay, so you're going to have some wintry potentials in there. Uh, could be a gradient storm where it's, uh, you know, following that gradient, where that gradient sets up is going to be key to this whole thing, and the EPO is a big player in that. Uh, winter cancel, no, we're not canceling winter, but we're steering away from the big coastal storm ideas going forward. I'm going to maintain that until I see something different. I think this is going to be largely EPO driven going forward. As you can see here, we have that ridging into Alaska, the cross polar flow, and we get enough cold air in place here in advance of any of these systems coming in to give us the chances at wintry potential, whether that's all snow or not or it's a wintry mix, or maybe snow going to rain, uh, still remains to be seen. We don't know that where that gradient is going to sit up exactly yet, but the pattern's at least suggesting that we will have an active track and some cold air to tap into, and as long as you have cold air in place, you have a fighting chance. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Martrich. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 3rd. Join us again next week. We should be in that cold period at that time, and hopefully looking at a signal uh, becoming reality for you snow lovers here on the 11th to 12th time frame. Take care.